Good morning. Three congressional races in Indiana have captured the attention of Democrats and Republicans all across the country. One of them, the contentious 9th District, which pits Baron Hill and Mike Sodrell for a third straight election. Joining us this morning, Congressman, Republican Mike Sodrell. Also here, Indianapolis Star political columnist Mike Tull, or Matt Tully. Sorry, Matt. Welcome, welcome to both of you. It's early this morning. Congressman, first of all, thank you for joining us. I'm glad to be here. Second of all, let's just go with the obvious. Why should people return you to Congress? Well, for a uh, first-term freshman, and uh, Brian Harry said uh, kind of a Mr. Smith goes to Washington, uh, brought about $47 million in infrastructure projects to the 9th District. Uh, some of that was bridges, some of that uh, runway extensions, uh, roads, <clears throat> interchanges, because uh, I first asked for a seat on the Transportation Committee since I sent, spent my life there. Um, we've also been very uh, helpful to IU and uh, the cyclotron, and, and uh, they do cancer research there, and they're uh, developing new generation sensors for uh, biological chemical weapons in uh, concert with Crane. Uh, so, you know, I think we've had a pretty good first run. If you look at job creation in the district, it's, it's doing well. Um, 60, 600 to 1,000 jobs at Jeff Boat, and just now it's 6 to 800 at Columbus at uh, Cummins Engines, and the uh, 2,000 there at Honda will help the northern part of the northern and eastern part of the district because northern Ripley, Jennings, and Bartholomew are easy commute. Uh, plus, it's got a, a trickle-down effect to the suppliers of Honda. Mm -hmm. uh, Aston and Seymour uh, will probably see an uptick, in, along with NTN drive shaft and some of the other second-tier um, parts and, and suppliers. So, uh, oh, the campaign doesn't seem to be much about that, though. It's, nope. uh, these nasty ads on both sides. Uh, one thing that always strikes me is, is when one side says the other doesn't have Hoosier values. And I've seen that in Republican ads. Your opponent has, has won in that district before. He, he's running pretty well in the polls, so a lot of people seem to like him. Why do you think he doesn't have Hoosier values? Well, there's a disconnect between, and it, you know, some people, you talk about negative campaign. I guess first I'd like to say we bought contrast ads. In marketing, you have product A, product B. Uh, here's what product A does, here's what B does, and we think you ought to buy A. It does more what you want to do or it does it better. Um, so, I mean, we just contrasted his votes against our votes. The difference in this race and the other two races we ran is we both have voting records. Uh, if somebody will take the trouble to get on House.gov, they can look them up. You know, and there are a number of sources where you can verify what's being said if people will take the trouble to do that. But do you really think he's X-rated? Because, I mean, you, you could take any vote and, and, and make a guy look horrible. It, are you comfortable with the way he's been portrayed? No, no I've tried to do the, the, the nice, clean votes, not, not motions to recommit, not uh, procedural motions, not uh, Christmas trees with all kinds of ornaments hanging on it. I mean, the, the marriage protection amendment was a good, clean vote. All it had in it was a marriage protection amendment. The flag protection amendment was a good, clean vote. There was nothing there but flag protection. Uh, so, I mean, those are the kinds of things that we've talked about where there, there are simple differences. Uh, he says that uh, he favors traditional marriage, and he says he respects the flag, and I take him at his word. He just didn't vote that way. Right. I want to talk about, since we're talking about the commercials, let's go ahead and do this. I know sure. the commercials that have been running on both sides that are extremely interesting, and we wanted to let the candidates respond to the ads. So let's look at what Democrats are running about Congressman Sodra. Congress, it's a mess. Millionaire Mike Sodrill's making it worse. Voting for pork barrel spending, record debt, and billions in giveaways to big oil while they made record profits. Sodrill took over $45,000 in campaign cash from them. Worse, Sodrill took thousands from congressional leaders who were embroiled in a revolting scandal and alleged cover-up. It's time for a change. Now, the ominous music aside, how do you want to respond? The Phantom of the Opera music? Or yeah, I was kind of noticing that. <laughs> uh, he can't have it both ways. He's got another ad that talks about Millionaire Mike. And, uh, and he said, if Millionaire Mike is going to be somehow influenced by $45,000, I don't even know the numbers correct. I haven't looked it up. Uh, first of all, you can't take corporate contributions, so Big Oil didn't give me any money. Uh, people that work for oil or drillers or something else may have given us money. Uh, but in my business, I've been a consumer of oil, not a producer. I don't own any oil stocks. High oil prices are a detriment to me, not a benefit. In fact, we burn between two and three million gallons a year of diesel. So it, it doesn't take a mental genius if you strike the, the difference there. Uh, call it two and a half million. A penny a gallon costs us twenty-five thousand a year. Two pennies cost us fifty thousand dollars a year. Uh, didn't get to be a millionaire, Mike, making bad business deals. So yeah. I mean, it's a silly ad. Let's go with a little bit, switch uh, gears a little bit to the Mark Foley situation. Should Dennis Hastert remain as speaker? 
Well, I, the the sequence of events from my side was we we learned about these uh, instant messages uh, and the emails, or at least I did on Friday before we adjourned. Uh, we adjourned about 12:35 Saturday morning. Uh, the last vote was to refer this to the ethics committee. Uh, I slept fast, caught an airplane, and as soon as I was in the district, I issued a press release and sent a letter to Speaker Astert and asked for an FBI investigation. That I, I don't think people have any faith in the ability of Congress to investigate itself. I thought it ought to be an outside investigation. To his credit, he issued a press release on Sunday and sent a letter to Attorney General Gonzalez and asked for the FBI and the Justice Department to do the investigation. There's a presumption of innocence in the United States, and I'm willing to wait until the investigation is concluded before I make any uh, uh, decisions one way or the other. Including with on Speaker Hastert? Sure. I mean, I, I don't know what the Speaker knew. As a matter of fact, at this point, I don't even know what uh, Mark Foley did. Uh, we know part of what he did. I'm not sure we, we know the full extent of it. And uh, I want to wait for the FBI investigation to tell us who knew what and when they knew it and what was actually done. So based on what you know now, would you vote for Speaker Hastert for Speaker again? Uh, yeah, I mean, what we have right now is, is something that's just a cut above gossip. I mean, they're, they're, in, the, uh, they're in the process now of taking depositions, uh, sworn statements, uh, which, you know, I, I put a little more faith in than, than just uh, he said, she said, and who but said. But do you really think it's gossip? I mean, you have the emails, you have the instant messages. Well, but my understanding is that what he had were the emails. There are emails and there are instant messages. Uh, there is nothing that convinces me yet that he knew about the instant messages. Uh, what he knew, uh, what I believe he knew, was about the emails. And, uh, and they're, they're two very okay. distinct issues. On, on a broader political issue uh, from the standpoint, how, uh, how damaging has the Foley uh, scandal been for you and other Republicans? Has it taken the air out of your sails? Well, it hasn't for me. I, now, I mean, I didn't know Foley, didn't uh, the, the way Congress works, you typically get to meet your your fellow freshmen and uh, get to know them better, and then your state delegation and people you serve on committees with. Um, no, I don't. I don't think it's having any impact on me. Might it impact a race next door uh, to Foley's district in Florida? It may. Right. Um, There's a couple other issues I want to hit because we're starting to run out of time. Let's talk about immigration. How do you stand on that? Well, I've, from day one, I, you know, I usually preface my remarks by saying that we're a nation of immigrants. Uh, Im immigration has been part of our culture since we were a country. But we can't stand unlimited illegal immigration. It has to be limited. It has to be legal. We need to know who you are, why you're coming here, and what you're bringing with you. First step in that is border security. Uh, I thought the comprehensive bill was a really bad idea, and the Senate bill was an even worse idea. So, uh, you know, we need to secure the border first. And for three different reasons, not just immigration. If immigrants can come across the border, terrorists can come across the border, drug smugglers come across the border. So we have uh, uh, three or four good reasons to secure the border. Matt, you get the last question. Well, every Republican in the country is being asked how closely they're linked to the president. How, how, how closely do you stand with the president? And since we're here in Indiana, how closely do you stand with the governor of Indiana? Well, you know, I've told people he's uh, my president, voted for him twice. Um, you know, uh, when I disagree with him, I've got enough backbone to tell him I disagree with him and, uh, and have done that. Uh, border security is one of the disagreements. But uh, I've been married, married my wife 38 years. We don't agree all the time either. So, uh, you know, he's, he's still my president. I disagree with him when I need to. Mike Sodrell, thank you for joining us this morning. Oh, glad to be here. And good luck in this. When we return, we'll hear from Democratic challenger Baron Hill.